Hi Snooker fans, it's Brayton here for DafferSnooker.com. I'm here at the Preston Guild Hall to do a Q&A session with former World Amateur Champion and two-time ranking event semi-finalist, Kurt Mafflin, aka Big Keith. How are you son? Not bad mate, not bad. Good man. Now in the beginning, what made you take up snooker? I have to be the old man. He, uh, he used to play every Friday, Saturday night and uh, just started tagging along when I was seven, eight years of age. Yeah. Went down on a Friday night with him and uh, just sort of started eating a few balls and just really enjoyed playing. So Saturday, and Friday and Saturday nights turned into like Tuesday, Thursday, <laughs> after school, yeah. Friday, Saturday. It just started going like that basically until I was probably about, I don't know, nine, nine and a half, ten. Then I started playing near enough every day. Yeah, I mean, I know what the old man's like. He doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't like just a quick best of three, does he? No, nah, it don't, it don't happen. It don't work like that. Jeez, I used to turn up for a little game with him on Friday and find myself playing come Saturday morning. <laughs> yeah, he used to play from eight from, eight from Friday. Eight o'clock Friday night to about eight, nine Saturday morning. Good man, legend. So to date, who's had the most influence on your career? Again, it'd have to be Dad. Uh, he's been my coach my whole career as well. So, you know, it was them. He got me started. You know, he managed to get me sponsorship from a young age. Managed to do this, and he's obviously coached me the rest of me my career. So, it'd have to be Dad. Good man. Now, last season was a bit of a mixed one for you. A couple of quarterfinals wasn't the best of seasons. What are your goals now for this coming season? Again. Say top 32. I mean, you have to look at it realistically. Obviously, I'd like to get in the 16. Who, who don't? But uh, yeah, top 32, and obviously to win a tournament this season. Starting, starting to push on a bit. Absolutely, son. You're not getting any younger, son. Any younger. I'm not getting any lighter either. <laughs> the old greys just like the show all past it. Yeah, got to get it done. Uh, what queue do you currently use? Paris queue, best in the business for me. Uh, it's an old one queue, and uh, I'm super happy with it. I mean. Uh, Never had a problem with any of his cues. I think he's top notch. Yeah, absolutely. Found that. I mean, any any stuff that's ever needed to be done with the cue and all, just like giving yeah, the ball is pretty much he's done. With it. Yeah, good man. And what tip do you use? Prefer an Outmaster blue blue diamond or Outmaster. I haven't tried these other new tips that are out and about really. Uh, I tried one of those Kamui's a couple of years ago. I didn't really like it. Uh, I know there's a there's a few other tips out now, but I'm just, I'm happy with a blue diamond or the Outmaster. Yeah, whatever's hardest. Yeah. Now, you've had a, quite a long career so far. Like I said, you've been a couple, couple of uh, real decent points in your career so far. But what's been the most memorable match in your mind so far in your career? Oh, it's got to be winning the, winning the World Amateur, the final, I suppose. Winning the World Amateur Championships in Jordan, 2006. Uh, got me back on tour. Yeah. Cracked a couple as well, you know, like playing, playing Ronnie for the first time. Uh, on TV in China, that's, that's always a big game. Um, yeah, I'd probably say those two. Really. Good man. I'm sorry to ask you this one, mate, but what's your most painful defeat in your career so far? Well, up until up until uh, quite recently, it was uh, losing to Ding in China from four one up. Uh, but I'd have to nearly say probably losing to Sid Wilson in the first round of the World Championships this season, uh, season just gone. Definitely a low point now for sure. Now, who would you say, in your opinion, is the toughest player on tour to beat? See, it's a bit of a trick question, that one. Yeah. Because uh, I haven't played everyone, but you know, you look at some players, you think, like Selby, how tough is he to beat? Um, but someone for me, like, like Holt, Holtie, I haven't, I don't know how many times we've played, maybe three or four times, yeah. I've beat him. I mean, he, he just, <laughs> just can't beat him. And he always plays well against me at all. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I, for me, he holds quite tough to beat. Uh, like I said, there's, there, there is a few, obviously. You've got Ronnie's and uh, Dings and, and Higgins and Selby's. They're always going to be tough no matter, no matter yeah. how they play. Yeah. But yeah, probably Holtie's one of them for me. But it's a fair point you make, because it always seems that when you speak to most players on tour, there's always somebody on tour that has just got a horrendous record against Yeah, yeah, it's I just... mean, every, every player's got someone they just can't beat, no matter what they do. <laughs> and, uh, and I, I play terrible every time I play him as well, and he normally plays pretty well. Yeah. So you, you just, just can't beat him. Okay, you'd be delighted when he hears this, you? that's for sure. Now, what would you say is your best personal achievement in snooker to date? Well, again, obviously, winning the World Amateurs, that's one. Uh, turning pro for the first time 
I was 15 at the time when I actually got my tour card. Yeah. Uh, that was massive. And uh, making making your first dungeon as well, obviously. Yeah. yeah. I mean, probably those three. Good man. Now, I know you, a man likes to keep himself to himself, very fussy who you eat with, fussy who you chill with, just fussy in general Mate, anyway. Good joke, isn't it? But uh, who would you say is your best friend on tour? But it's none of these lot anyway, I'll tell you that's for sure. <laughs> none of these lot on tour. Uh, it's got to be you, CDG. Good man. But, but now our sister's on board. Yeah. I don't know. A bit, a bit of split loyalties there, yeah? Yeah. No worries, but as long as we keep you in the family. You've got your work cut out. Absolutely. But powerful. yeah, no, none of these on tour. No chance. Okay, man, that's fair play. Now, mate, I know you like your food, because we, we dine together most, most evenings, uh, but what is actually your favourite food part? Probably say it Italian. Yeah. I'd probably go with Italian. Hopefully, when I retire, yeah. I've got enough dough in the camp, and uh, I'd like to retire in Italy, me, really. Yeah. So, yeah, Italian food for me. What part of Italy for you? Southern Italy for you? I just like Italy in general. Yeah. I mean, uh, I think it's fantastic. I like the tempo out there. You know, in London, when you're in London, everything just rush, rush, rush. You're yeah. just rushing all the time. You haven't got time for anything. No. Whereas in Italy, they, they spend three hours eating. Yeah. It's pretty much like where you reside now in Norway. It's quite relaxed and chill, isn't it? Like compared to London. Yeah, but it's, it, no. It's it, not it, London, it's, it's getting towards the London status, and it's, okay. it's, it's just too, too hectic. No one's got any time for anything, and you know? that's not me. You know me, I'm, I'm uh, yeah. chilled out. <laughs> Mr. Me, myself, and I, yeah? Yeah, Good team man. me, you know. <laughs> now, what's your favourite drink, though? Water. All right, well, let's scrap that a minute. When, when we're out on a night out, we You know me, I love a coffee. I yeah, do yeah, love yeah, coffee. Yeah. Any kind of coffee, really. Yeah. And uh, something you can't get over here, which I haven't seen, but if, you, if you're going to go alcoholic, I'd say gin Russian. Oh yeah, I tried that, I tried that in Norway, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a pink mixer drink, and uh, I, I haven't seen it over here. No, no. But yeah, I'd probably say Gin Russian. Yeah, I can vouch for that people, anyone watching, mate, if you get yourself to Scandinavia, even if it's for the Gin Russian alone. I know, if I just want to complete chill out, I'll go for a little whiskey. Good man, mate, good man. Now, you've played at most of the venues in the UK and in Asia, but in your opinion, what's your favourite venue to play at? Well, for me, I, it was, it, it's the Crucible. Never, never experienced anything like that. Never felt anything like that either. Uh, Temple Drums, obviously, one of them as well. Yeah, great yeah. place to play. Absolutely. Uh, and and normally Beijing, I mean, it's, it's, it takes you years to get there, but uh, <laughs> it's normally a pretty good venue. Yeah. yeah. So uh, yeah, probably those three. What was the unique feeling for you walking out the Crucible? Like, what did, what was your feeling as you come down the steps of that? Because <laughs> it's something you dreamed of doing since you started playing snooker. And obviously that dream has now come true and you're walking down those steps, waving to the crowd. And obviously the crowd are quite on top of you yeah. straight away, you know, and you've got all the cameras in your face straight away. It's just a it's just a really good experience, a really good buzz. It's quite hard to explain it. You need to experience it. Yeah. It's something you can't, you know, people say, Oh, how does it feel to be a father? You can't really explain it, you yeah. need to experience it yourself, kind of thing, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Bro. Now you guys don't get much chance to relax like away from snooker, such a hectic schedule. Even this season, such a quick turnaround from the Wells, uh, obviously where we are now at the river. But when you get a chance to put the queue down and just chill out, what do you like to do? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like to just uh, I like to do exactly what it says: chill out, and that I take time with the family, yeah. and uh, just just silly, stupid things. Not doing a lot. Maybe go out and play a bit of football with a little one. Play a bit of PlayStation with him. Yeah. Go out for something to eat. You know, just, just completely switch off from snooker. Not not even hit a ball. Not think about it. Yeah, your little man's definitely, definitely a little legend. And I suppose with the hectic schedule, it makes you appreciate that time of him even more, doesn't it? It does. And it's actually, I think it's really healthy for a snooker player just to completely switch off uh, when you get the chance to, when you've got a little four or five week gap. Yeah. And just take a good two, two solid weeks off or 10, 10, 12 days, whatever you want to do, whatever you feels right for you. Just completely switch off and not, not think about snooker at all. Well, I mean, you're spot on there, pal, because obviously snooker being such a mentally torturing game as well. I mean, to get that chance, like I said, because of the schedule, right, that much chance, but when you actually do, just to completely shut your mind away from mm. it, don't think about it, I suppose it's must be quite refreshing for you guys. Yeah, that's what I've done after the World Championships last season, just yeah. didn't pick up the queue for five weeks. Okay. Near enough five weeks. Good man. I know you like to think you can dance, which actually, I'll give you, give you a due. You've got, you've I've got, got you've moves. Got, you've got moves, son, you've got moves. I showed you them. Correct, mate, yeah, correct. Mate. I've got two left feet, I'm no dancer, you guys, you guys already know that. But, uh, so come on, Big Keith, tell me, when you're in a club, what, what tune gets you out you see it gets you bubbling? For me, it's a good 80s, good, proper 80s. 80s music, yeah. you know, a bit of soul, a bit of R&B, 
Yeah. That's that that would get me off any time. That line would you write up, yeah? yeah? Good man. And when you were growing up, who was your sporting hero? Jimmy White. Yeah. Uh always has been. I mean and obviously now I know him pretty well. Good yeah. mates with Jimmy. Good guy. Yeah. And uh yeah, I just I just really liked the way he played. I thought it was really entertaining. And I've just always looked upon him as a as a sporting hero really. Yeah. Obviously you got the you got your runnies and Andrews and that come in. Obviously good to watch as well, but yeah, Jimmy for me was the main main man. Yeah, absolutely. Go legend, Jimmy. Now, for our last question, if you could run world snooker, what changes would you make and why? Just so it's said as well, I think I think Barry's done a great job. And he's doing a great job. Jason Ferguson as well, helping him out. Like this season, got rid of the entry fees. A lot of players have wanted that for, for ages and yeah. talked amongst themselves about it. But probably three things have changed. One of them would be uh, not taking 64 players to China. Yeah. Uh, and in that same same uh, change, I'd, I'd have more practice tables out there. At, at least if you're taking 64 players out there, you've got to have more practice tables. Yeah, absolutely. But ideally, a lot of the players, myself included, would think it's more than enough for 32 players over there. Yeah. So I'd like to change that somehow. I'd like to get paid uh, from China quicker than three months. Yeah, yeah, fully agree. That would be one of them. A lot of players as well, you know, players that are a little bit lower down the rankings, they're, they're waiting for this money to come in. It's not easy. No, no, it's you not. Know, and no, it's more I don't know any other job in the world that takes three months to get paid. Yeah, yeah. Um, obviously, I'm not blaming World Snooker for that. That's got something to do with China. With, with China. Uh, another one. I'd like, I'd like to see all qualifiers played in one venue. Yeah, yeah. And... Uh, as central as possible for all sides of the UK, do you know what I mean? Sort of like a Midlands venue. Yeah, it? kind of like a Birmingham sort of, yeah. sort of thing. I think that would be perfect and it was purposely based for just the qualifiers. Yeah, it's a good point you make there, because I mean, for us London lads, I mean, I was funny just talking outside with Greg Stebbett about this and saying that for us London lads, it's probably an extra four or five grand a year, hotel expenses. Yeah, I mean, the players can just shoot off now yeah. they've played 40 minutes down the road yeah. in their own. Yeah, yeah. Whereas us, it's... Well, we're like 250, 300 miles away, aren't we? From everything. From everything. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'd probably, I'd probably look into that, I think. Good man. Look, but it's always lovely talking to you. And um, once again, thanks for the time. And uh, all of us at DapperSnooker.com, I wish you the very best for the rest of the season. Cheers, appreciate it. Cheers, mate.